If you want to turn there, you're welcome to. If not, we'll just talk about it a little bit. But in, in, in the book of Mark in chapter 11, let me paint a picture of what's going on here. You've got Jesus starting in verse 11, okay? They just came out of Jericho. He's got this whole entourage with him. And he's traveling along. And he's got this whole group of people following behind him. Well, with that, y'all remember the story of blind Bartimaeus? The blind guy that gets healed? Well, he's following Jesus too. I mean, he's like, he gets healed and he starts to see. And, and he just follows Jesus. So he's tagging along and Jesus is walking from Jericho and they're heading to Jerusalem. That's his end result. He's trying to get to Jerusalem. So he's, he's going to Jerusalem. He's got all these people behind him just piled. Probably like a, uh, maybe for a lack of a better example, would be like a rock man nowadays that has all their groupies behind him. I mean, that's what he had. And they were all behind him. Word had probably already spread around. They knew there was this wandering rabbi traveling around and he could do stuff that nobody else could do. They'd never seen anything like this before. They just heard stories of like Elijah and all these other heroes of, of the faith from way back when that did this kind of stuff. And who is this guy that's doing this? So people are following him. They want to know what's going on. And so he's got this whole group. They're going to Jerusalem. And he's got a focus. His desire is to go into the temple. All right? And he makes a journey into the... He makes it to Jerusalem. And he spends three days going in and out of the temple. And every time he goes to the temple, he is stirring something up. I mean, and that, I mean that's kind of the... You know, people say, well, Jesus came to, to you know, bring peace and everything. He said, no. The Bible actually said Jesus... He said, I didn't come to bring peace. I, pray, I came to bring division. Did you know Jesus said that? I didn't make it up. It's in the Bible. Jesus said, I came to stir up trouble. I want to mess with your thinking. And that was Jesus' passion because what happened was the, the, the Jewish nation had become so religious that, that the Bible says that, that we can have a form of godliness and, and, and be detached from the power of God. We can come to church and have a service and sing songs and, and, and have an emotional experience, but there's no power of God involved in it. And that's what had happened to many people in the Jewish faith. And it was sad. Um, and so, anyway, through all of that, Jesus is, is, is of course, he's going back and forth. And, and he's, uh, you know, he's already messed with the Pharisees and uh, the, uh, the scribes. He's turned over the, uh, the tables of the money changers and... And, you know, he's just going, come on, guys. This place is supposed to be a house of prayer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Things like that that were basic uh, principles that the Jewish nation had, had just overlooked. They missed. Through, through years and years of, of just doing the same thing over and over, day after day, week, week, year after year, they just they, they, they lost the relationship with God that God, that God wanted them to have. Well... It's interesting, if, you, if, you go, uh, if you're in uh, Mark chapter 11, if you want to follow along, that's fine. If not, if you go to Mark chapter 11, you'll find that on the third day, Jesus gets approached by this scribe. And the scribe, it's kind of like this guy is sitting back watching Jesus going back and forth, having verbal debates with everybody going on. Okay, And if you notice, when Jesus talks with people, if there's somebody that's religious and their heart's not right, He cuts them down. Yeah. Have you all noticed that in the Bible? Yeah. He doesn't play games with people that are religious or, or that, are make, that are causing people to, to lose sight of who God yeah. really is. Amen. He doesn't like that. Because that's what's messed up people's faith for years. Yeah. In, 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 in the Jewish faith and in Christian faith today. God hates it whenever we cause people to lose sight of who He really is. Amen. And we start clouding that relationship that God really wants with us. So what happened was, this one guy's watching, and he asked Jesus a question. He comes out and he says, hey, I got a question for you. He said this. In Mark chapter 11, verse 28, he says, Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Notice he says, Jesus, what commandment? And the whole Bible, this is a scribe. He knows his stuff. He says, what is the greatest thing in the Bible? What is the most important thing in the whole, not in the Bible, because they didn't have the whole Bible then, but what's the most important thing out of all of God's commandments? What's number one? Here's what, I love Jesus. He comes back, and you can tell the guy's heart was sincere. He really wanted to know. He's like, man, this guy knows something. There's something different about him. Jesus answered it and said, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus comes right back and he, and he establishes the very first commandment of the Ten Commandments. He says, 
The first commandment is have no other what? Gods before me. That's, what, that's God's very first commandment of the Ten Commandments. That is the very number one commandment that God throws out there to Moses and says, look guys, I don't want you to worship anybody else but me. I'm the only God. There is nobody else. I'm it. Okay? The buck stops here. That's what God was establishing with Moses. And so Jesus establishes that with this scribe and says, look, he said, just, you know, there's, there's only one God. And... Let me say, I put a note here. I said, I think he did this because of all the gods that Israelites had brought to Jerusalem and the temple through the years. They had defiled God's temple so much that he established that one basic premise that, look, you have to worship God and Him alone. There is no other God. And until you get that one point in your life right, and until you realize that, that your bank account's not your God, until you realize that, that you know, your car's not your God, your house isn't your God, the, the, the IRS is not your God, until you realize that, that, that God Almighty is the only God you need to have in your life, nothing else really matters. There's no need to, for you to even go any further. I want to establish that point for you right now. Because everything else is secondary to that. If you don't have that right, nothing else will work for you. You have to realize that there is only one God and, and, he, and he alone uh, created the heavens and the earth and made you and me and wants a relationship with us. And he goes right into verse 30. He says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and uh, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. So he said, this is the most important thing for you. He establishes the, 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 the issue of God first. Then he comes in to the fact, he says, here's your first thing. He says, love God with everything you've got. Everything that you've got. With, with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. In other words, Jesus says, you need to love God with your total being. Everything that you are, everything you have, love God. And he jumps right into verse 31. And, and it says, and the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Everybody say one. one. There's one main ingredient. One main ingredient in the life of a Christian. And what Jesus was, was showing them was, look guys, what you want is this. What you've got is this. Because you don't have this. Does that make sense? This is the one main ingredient that Jesus was trying to get through to the, to, the, to the Jewish nation at that time. Look, God wants you. It's not about your sacrifices. The Bible's really clear. It says, look, guys, you know, the, 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 the Scriptures say that, that uh, God's, God's more interested in our, in our worship of Him and our love for Him than He is in sacrifices. That, that sacrifices are secondary. God is after our heart. He wants a relationship with us. And so there's one main ingredient, and that one main ingredient is love. The main ingredient that Jesus spoke about that makes that, that'll, that'll turn uh, dough into something that will rise is love. Amen. You know, Jay, you talked about the, 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 mission, or the, uh, the mission in Mexico and how you, you pointed out that, that, that the kids, as they get older, that the older ones would even stay. And then you even mentioned that, that the majority of them, I think you said, go off and wind up being missionaries themselves. Why do you think that is? I'll take a hip shot at it, and I'll, I'll bet you I'm, I'm not a betting guy, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, sure that I have it right. The reason I believe a lot of them go into the mission field is because they experienced real love. Amen. Somebody in their life showed them that they cared about Amen. them and loved them so much that they said, I want to do that for other people. They created a love in their heart for God, and they wanted to share that with other people. That's why I believe a lot of them do that and go off into the mission fields, because they found out the main ingredient. And it's love. It's having a relationship with God and loving God with all of your heart, with everything that you've got. And if you'll do that, you'll begin to love other people. 